this session. And um, <coughs> then we have three speakers, then a coffee break, and then two extra speakers. Note there is a change in the in the speakers in the next session after the coffee break. And we will start with the high head from uh, Xiamen University. Okay. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> I'm Tai He from Xiamen University, and uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for their invitation to this wonderful conference and uh, their the hospitality. So my talk, the title of my talk is Thermal Transport in Low Dimensional Lattices, Negative Temperature Jam and the Im Impacts of Thermal Expansion on Thermal Transport. But before I begin my talk, I, I would like to show you where I come from. So, Xiamen City is a port city located at the southeast coast of China. And the Xiamen University is located at the island of Xiamen. And uh, actually, the, where the 19th Century International Conference on Statistical Physics uh, are held here in uh, 1995, two years ago. I know that some of you participated in the conference uh, at that time. So here's our campus. Uh, it's half surrounded by, by mountain and half surrounded by the sea. So actually, it's a very beautiful campus. And uh, for old friends and the new friends here, uh, welcome to Beijing Xiamen. So now I turn to my talk. So first of all, I will give a very brief introduction of thermal transport and uh, what I'm working on the recently. And then I move to the interfacial thermal conduction topic and uh, if uh, if there's still time I will talk about the topic of thermal expansion actually uh, to study the relation between the thermal expansion and the thermal transport so <coughs> thermal transport and I know the everyone here knows thermal transport so from the fundamental point of view People can, what people concern is to make a bridge between the microscopic dynamics and the macroscopic laws like Fourier's law. And the question is uh, uh, if the Fourier's law is valid or not in such kind of microscopic models. And the people are also interested to develop the approach to uh, thermal transport and uh, construct the theoretical framework of uh, long equilibrium statistical phases. On the other hand, and there are many the new issues discovered of thermal transport discovered in recent years. Like, uh, for example, this is where we'll talk about it later on. So, <coughs> this is exciting. And uh, <coughs> the idea methodology here is with the development of this part, then we can have a better understanding of this part. So what I'm going to present today is basically follow this line. And uh, it turns out that the studies, which is application relevant somehow, is more or less relative to fundamental, some fundamental issues like the existence of local equilibrium state or, and uh, the definition of temperature. So, as I said, there are many the normal the phenomena discovered in recent years. An outstanding one is the negative differential thermal resistance. The basic idea is for a system, then we increase the temperature difference, then we have an increasing heat current naively. But for some system, if we keep increasing the temperature difference, then we we'll find the heat current will decrease and this is so-called the negative defense of thermal resistance. So this effect actually is the analogy of the it, its electrical counterpart. And uh, we worked on to this topic for a few years, and recently we proposed a general framework for the theoretical analysis for the uh, NDTR, and uh, we obtained a uh, but very general conditions for the occurrence of the NDTR. Yet, and later on, we have a very better, better understanding of the mechanism for the NDTR, presence of NDTR. And uh, it is, can be understood based on the 
dynamical localization of the oscillation modes of the system. And another interesting topic is the magnetic Hall effect. The basic idea is that for a given magnetic insulator, then we put a temperature gradient, temperature gradient along the longitudinal direction. And uh, if uh, there exists a transverse thermal conductivity in this direction, and then we have a magnetic Hall effect. And the semi classical understanding is that uh, there's a rotational magnet we pack it, and uh, if the system it, it's just a, there is just an edge current or magnet uh, along the system, then we have the effect. So previous studies uh, discovered the effect uh, in the system with the without inversion symmetry. So the question is, can magnet Hall effect occur in lattice? with inversion symmetry? So uh, the answer is yes, and uh, we consider the leaf lattice, and uh, we do observe the transverse thermal conductivity in the, this system. But uh, so this is a very brief introduction. What I just mentioned, uh, there's normal phenomenon about the thermal transport. But what I'm going to present today is a much older topic which is interfacial thermal conduction. So what is interfacial thermal conduction? Suppose we have two materials, A and B, then we connect the two materials uh, together, then we have an interface. So now we have the in heat current along the system. I mean, the, the current, of course, the current is carried by phonon. So a naive picture is that the phonon, when phonon collides with the interface, it will be scattered, and then we have an interface of thermal resistance. When we measure the temperature profile along the system, we, we will find that there's a temperature discontinuity or temperature drop at the interface. And this study comes, this topic comes from the study of Capiza on the boundary between the helium and the solid. And theoretically, there are two main uh, uh, models, phenomenological models. One is the called acoustic mismatch model, and another one is called diffuse mismatch model. And those models are phenomenological, and they are, uh, to some extent, they are only suitable to microscopic system. But since to the development of nanotech technology today, the density of the electric components of the device becomes uh, higher and higher. So here's a figure, shows the evolution of trans transistor gate and density of transistor over time. So it shows that between 1970 and uh, 2011, the gate, length, the gate length shrank from 10 micron to 28 nanometer. And the number of transistors per square millimeter increased from 200 to over 1 million. So this is a huge number of electric components. So now the difficulty to integrate the electronic components lies not in the increasing nanotechnology, but lies in mainly in the how to decrease the interface of thermal resistance in such huge uh, number of uh, components on the device. So now people tend to study the interface of thermal conduction at atomic scale. And uh, they developed many methods to study this problem. But uh, previous study uh, focus, what previous study focus is on the how thermal boundary conductance uh, is affected by the property of the interface, like the roughness. And the last study is the temperature profile. So we do know that there's a boundary jumped uh, at the interface, but we don't know the details of the interface. Uh, we don't know details inside the interface if we look at the interface from the, uh, based on the atomic scale. So, <clears throat> If we want to study it, 
temperature profiling inside the interface, and we should know the details of the interface. And it turns out uh, the results are, there are plenty of detailed results, and uh, somehow the counterintuitive uh, result may occur. And uh, to, for this purpose, we considered uh, such a model, a microscopic model. This model consists of two segments, and it's coupled by a harmonic uh, coupling. So the system is described by the harmonic here, and the H arrow and the HR uh, denotes this harmonic for left segment and the right segment here. And the, the parameter K arrow is a parameter for the interaction potential inside the segment. And the parameter F and the lambda is the, are the parameters for, to describe the uh, harmonic and the unharmonic on-site potential in the system. So this is the kind of the uh, general model with uh, unharmonicity. And the KC here uh, describes the uh, magnitude of the coupling uh, between the two segments. So here's the model. And uh, it turns out the parameter KC plays a key lower for the thermal boundary conductance. So first of all, I would like to see the, how KC affects the thermal transport. And the, the first uh, case we consider is a harmonic case. That means the lambda, the unharmonic parameter lambda, is equal to zero. So since the system is harmonic, so we can use the Langevin equation and Green function of method to calculate the heat current. So there, here is a very good reference uh, written by Abyssad uh, for this uh, method. And uh, so let's consider we coupling limit at first. And uh, it, the result is that whatever the structure is, it's asymmetric or asymmetric or with on-site potential or without on-site potential. In the weak coupling limit, uh, heat flux is proportional to uh, Kc square. <clears throat> and when we increase Kc further, and the scattering effect at the interface becomes stronger. So the, then we have a decreasing uh, heat current. So this is expected. Uh, yeah, symmetric means that uh, the parameter k arrow to equal to kr, then the parameters of the two segments are the same. That means the two structures are all the same, asymmetric. Just one. Ah, no, no, the, there's an interface, yeah, 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 not homogeneous, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, Okay, the Green function is derived from the infinite segments, half infinite segments, but here the, it, we, we consider, when we calculate, we can consider finite uh, matrix. It means the finite size. What are the boundary conditions? Yeah, the boundary condition is uh, actually the, the, the system is in contact with the uh, infinite uh, size of the harmonic oscillator, coupled harmonic oscillator. Then later on, if we, uh, uh, if we cancel, I mean, the, if we cancel the degrees of freedom of the harmonic oscillator, then we get the, the property of the reservoir. Okay, so, uh, so this is expected. But uh, what I'm interested in is about the temperature jump at the interface. So it means that the temperature difference between the two interface uh, particles. And uh, it, it turns out, naively thinking, if we keep increasing the interface coupling, the two particles will couple very strong and uh, will behave like just one particle. And, but it turns out that when Kc is strong enough, but not strong, uh, very strong up to infinity, is in this regime, and we will find a negative temperature jump. It means that locally, uh, you have a positive temperature gradient, and the heat current 
goes from left to right and it's against the temperature gradient. So of course, of for sure, it violates the Fourier law locally. So this is a counterintuitive phenomenon. And uh, <clears throat> to make sure our result is a physical result, but not uh, some numerical uncertainty, we do the both theoretical calculation and the molecule dynamic simulation. And the, the two methods uh, give the consistent results. <clears throat> so now we want to understand why the negative temperature jam occurs. Then based on the Green function approach, we have the velocity correlation matrix here and written in this formula. And then we can define the local temperature Actually, it is simply, uh, simple, then it's nothing but the kinetic energy of the particles. So uh, now we, we define a function lambda, which is a function of frequency of phonomons omega. And the lambda can be written in this formula. And then the temperature is the value, the magnitude of lambda when frequency equal to the upper bound of the phonon spectrum. So this is the lambda here represent uh, the adding contributions uh, to the local temperature from the possible phonon modes with the frequency uh, less than omega. I mean, the, with the, we add the phonon Phonon mode contribution of phonon modes of, uh, with frequency from zero to omega. So this is the meaning of the function here. Then we plot lambda as a function of, of omega for the two interface of particles, and with a special uh, typical choice of the Kc. So the the first result is that yes. One dimension. And the bandwidth is large compared to the bandwidth of the system. Which that is yeah, 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 yes. Yes, so be. Yeah, yeah, so be its case. Yeah. Yes. No, no, this, this is a harmonic case. So, harmonic case. Harmonic. Otherwise, you cannot do serialism. Why you left the local equilibrium? Uh, you don't have a completely, still completely integrable system. Right. Uh, yeah, but uh, I will show you the, some numerical results later on. To Actually, the, 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 I mean, the existence of local equilibrium is still, for me, is still, uh, is, is still a question. I will show you later the results. Okay. Yes, we know the harmonic chain, the, the temperature profile is flat. And the, the, the variety of local equilibrium is to be a question. I mean, just know about it. OK. OK, I will show the sound uh, results later on. <coughs> so first off, uh, when we see the plus lambda here, we can see that when Kc become larger, and uh, the contribution from the high frequency modes uh, uh, are suppressed, are suppressed. Then the, for surprisingly for Kc equal to 1.5, uh, <clears throat> the, the behavior is, is almost linear, which means that uh, the contrib contribution of the possible form of modes are almost equivalent. Otherwise, it's not uh, linear. And the, and the third result is that there's a crossover of the Red light and the red light here and here. So the crossover means the occurrence of a negative temperature jump. <clears throat> so now uh, comes two questions. So since you, yeah, as you said, we are con we consider the integrable model. So. The question number one is that it's the negative temperature jam an artificial effect due to the integrability of the system. And the second one is that we consider an interface. This interface has a soft discontinuity of the interface of coupling. 
So question number two is that does the negative temper jump come from the year defined uh, interface? Is the temperature profile flat inside each segment? Yeah, yeah. So I will show you the result later. Yeah, that's a pro profile. Okay, so for first question, integrable issue. And then we consider the unharmonic case, uh, for example, the 5 4 model. So now in this case, uh, again, we find the negative temperature jump in this region. And uh, this is the typical. The, Longlinear response behavior. And for the second question, uh, year defined interface. Now, the, yes, the, the, the coupling is discontinuous. This is question. And uh, nothing inside the interface. So, this is year defined interface. So, uh, uh, to solve this problem, we replace the coupling with the intermediate junction here, shown here. And the coupling inside the junction is we have, uh, very smoothly uh, uh, in, the, in the whole system. So <clears throat> now the, for this case, and uh, we probe the temperature profile, as you ask. So you see that the, 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 the temperature profile in the segments, uh, in the, two, the left side and right, side, right hand side segments are flat. And you have a very large jump here. And the temperature gradient here in this part is positive. So again, heat current is against the temperature gradient in this case. Okay. So this is indicate a violation of Fourier's law locally. I, I was emphasize that. So uh, as the question that the validity of local equilibrium, and uh, we we try to see the some hints by the calculating the even moments of the velocity. So this is the first three the uh, even moments, second moment, a uh, seventh moment, and fourth moment, and sixth moment. We define the temperature based on the even moments of the velocity. And the technique used here can be found in this reference. So the results that, OK, this is harmonic. This is an integral system. But when you calculate the, uh, the, 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 def, uh, the temperature based on this definition, and they showed a very nice agreement for all these three definitions. So somehow uh, it gives a hint uh, that uh, uh, the distribution is the uh, is the Gaussian distribution, and yeah. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, finally uh, determined. I mean, <clears throat> okay. So now I propose a question of the validity of the local equilibrium and. Uh, for the second case, is the fine four model. And this is a typical unharmonic model. And then we don't have such a surprising apparent uh, the counterintuitive effect. But we do see the very small uh, uh, positive temperature gradient inside the interface here. So again, we have the so-called negative uh, temperature jump here. So, <coughs> so I. Uh, do I have, still have time? Okay, I, okay. So I will move to the second part uh, before I draw a conclusion and the sound, uh, give some discussions. So the second top, uh, uh, topic is about thermal expansion <coughs> and the, its impact uh, on the thermal transport in the APU alpha beta model. So the, the, the basic motivation is that uh, the recent controversy on the effect of asymmetric interaction potential on semiconductor. The issue is that uh, if the uh, uh, thermal transport is normal or anomalous for such a system with asymmetric interaction and the momentum conserved. So the uh, this is uh, still in uh, controversy, but so 
uh, it's quite necessary to study the uh, the asymmetry of the interaction or and uh, study the dependence of uh, some transfer on the asymmetric interaction and this this one will lead to some expansion effect okay <clears throat> and theoretically uh, to study some expansion, most of previous studies use the perturbation method, such as the lattice dynamics calculation and the long equilibrium green function. And those methods are perturbative uh, ap uh, approach. So we, they are incapable of, of dealing with strong unhomogeneity. And strong unhomogeneity is the more interesting for us. So we have to uh, pro, uh, to, to develop some approach to deal with the, uh, the strong unhomogeneity here. Okay, so now we consider this un, a few alpha beta model with a potential given here. So this is a very typical asymmetric potential. Asymmet and the asymmetry comes from the parameter alpha, comes from parameter alpha. So uh, if alpha, a key property of this pot potential is that if alpha <coughs> is in this range and it's a single wire, and if alpha is in that range, it is a double wire. So, <coughs> so the, now this is a very uh, important property of this system. We, can, we see the uh, many effects that comes from the property. And now let's look at the asymmetry of the system. Beta equals one? Uh, I freeze beta and the k equal to yeah. one. Otherwise, here is a k beta. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's look at the asymmetry of the system. And uh, naively, uh, since the asymmetry of the, this potential uh, comes from the, the parameter alpha, so naively, the, when we increase alpha, it is supposed to have a larger asymmetry. But it is not the case when the thermodynamic dynamic property is concerned. So we define the, an asymmetry, asymmetry factor to measure the asymmetry of the system. So the basic idea here for this quantity is that we divide it by the wire, potential wire, by the vertical line through the wire button XC. And then the, we hold two horizontal line, very small line, green, as shown the green line here. Then we put inside the wire at different parts. Then it, the lines will stop somewhere. Then we calculate the area enclosed by the potential profile and the, the lines here, and we, we get S1, and then we similarly we get S2. Then we compare the two areas, and this is uh, we lead to the asymmetry factor. So now the result is that when we uh, calculate the asymmetry factor, sigma, uh, sigma as a function of alpha, so then you get, uh, with, if we increase the magnitude of alpha in this way, then we, in, we get increasing sigma, then decreasing behavior. <clears throat> so uh, this is, uh, this is the, actually is, is not consistent or the naive the picture. So based on this understanding of asymmetry, then we can understand why the, the temperature profile of the system. The, we can see that the temperature gradient of the system has the long monotonic behavior when we increase alpha. We will see that temperature gradient will first increase, then decrease when we increase the absolute value of alpha. And the finally, we approach to a flat profile, which is typically harmonic behavior. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, exactly the same as the, the behavior of semi-sigma here. 
So the naively, uh, when we have uh, the KOT system, and uh, if this, we increase the unharmonic coupling, unharmonic coupling further, then it is supposed to have a more chaotic system. But it turns out that uh, for such a system, it is not the case. So now we, based on the understanding of asymmetry, then we get the main result of the, uh, the second part. So uh, we obtained a long monotonic behavior of thermal conductance as a function of alpha. And uh, this behavior uh, can be divided by three domains and corresponded to negative and the positive and the menacing coefficient of thermal expansion. Thermal expansion, uh, gamma, we, I will talk, uh, talk it later. So this is basically the result. And the, the alpha, the, the, the turning point here is not two, but 2.5 somehow. This is due to the uh, finite temperature effect. <clears throat> So to understand the long monotonic behavior uh, is based on actually is based on the the the, uh, the understanding of the asymmetry of the potential. Uh, this is small system size, uh, maybe uh, maybe one hundred or sixty four years. This know that this is not conductivity. This is conductance. Uh, it's, I, 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 I didn't calculate the size dependence of. I think many other people can uh, study the size dependent of the conductivity of the alpha beta model. So here, we we study the uh, the asymmetry effect on the thermal transport. Yes. Yeah, alpha is the, the yeah the uh, cubic term for t cubic term. Yes. Then the then alpha to zero, then you reduce to FU beta model. Yeah, the the, the system is a symmetry. Sim, sim, uh, sorry. No, if if it is a, yeah, if this is a, sym a symmetric system and the long sum expansion, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, the, uh, yeah. We, we we should have more more details of gamma. But I will show you later. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a roughly the uh, correspondence. Yeah, not <clears throat> okay. The, as I said, uh, we. All we concern is very uh, the anomaly is very strong anomaly, so we <coughs> developed the self-consistent phonon theory to deal with the anomaly. The basic idea is, is uh, we propose a trial Hamiltonian with the effective harmonic potential coefficient f here, and the f is temperature dependent, and the f can be obtained from uh, self-consistent equations here shown here. So by solving the equations, then we can calculate, for example, the average in the particle distance. Then this is the index of thermal expansion, right? Then we can calculate the coefficient of thermal expansion. Then, the, then we get the, what, what I just said, the correspondence. You can see that the, the sign will be changed when we increase alpha in this way, we from positive to negative. So uh, this is the... Uh, Nicely corresponding to the the long monotonic behavior of some conductance. Okay, the, to verify the our approach is correct, we compared the result with the molecule dynamic simulation. So the two approach uh, are consistent. Where uh, even for alpha is very strong. And then, uh, okay, we can get scaling relation for some conductance. Okay, let's skip here and uh, come to the conclusion part. <clears throat> so, uh, in part one, we 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 give the we we just uh, verify that the 
occurrence of negative temperature jumps is uh, not uh, artificial, trivially artificial effect due to somehow the integrability of the uh, the year defined that of the in interface. So the so one main do you jam the concept of temperature? In thermodynamics, temperature is defined in a region which is uh, uh, infinitely small uh, from a microscopic viewpoint and uh, infinitely but infinitely large from microscopic viewpoint. But uh, this we, uh, this is not satisfying for our microscopic models. So. Uh, it seems to uh, go to the, the question that do we need uh, a new definition of the thermodynamic quantities like <coughs> temperature and, and, uh, and free energy, for example, to, in the long equilibrium system? If, for, in here, do we need a long equilibrium temperature here? And uh, for me, the, this is the, an open question. And uh, I would like to comment that the second law is not violated in, this, in our study although we, we need a better, better way to manifest it, because the, uh, I mean, the violation of this law is, uh, is, uh, is locally. Uh, if, if we look at the whole system together, uh, uh, the, the heat transport from high temperature reservoir to low temperature reservoir. And uh, for the second part, uh, we obtained the three domains of the behavior of semiconductance as a function of the asymmetry parameter alpha. And uh, we applied the self consistent formal theory to study the effect of thermal expansion. <coughs> okay, thank you for your attention. Questions? So, uh, uh, it's a question on the last part of your talk about yes. thermal expansion. Uh, there's no pressure which appears in your formula. You always look at the potential, but you know, physically you would think that there should be also a pressure. And I just yeah. wonder what happens to the pressure in your discussion. Yeah, because in, in our, yeah, I, I know the, your formula and our, my formula. Because in our the derivation, we, we have the unknown zero constant uh, A. This is A is the average or error here. So error is the average in the particle distance, which the, this parameter is will be zero for FU beta model. But in this case, it's long zero. So we have to solve uh, two the self consistent equations to get error and F together. So long problem, even though the uh, the 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 statistical average is canonical, but not the uh, grand canonical. Yes. Just because you examine pin, pin, there's always a pin in potential. Pin in potential, yeah, for the first part, yeah. But yeah, yeah there's no problem the, for, for the pin in potential. In the, in the harmonic case, I guess the steady state measure is exactly Gaussian. So yeah. therefore, the velocity distribution will also be uh, Gaussian. So maybe for local equilibrium, it's better to check some other uh, quantity, right? I mean, we have uh, any stress in or no, like since the current itself is non uh, doesn't decrease with system size, I guess that shows uh, there's no local equilibrium, maybe. Uh, yeah, we may find uh, another to this problem. Yes. There's a very natural definition of, of temperature uh, to con check local equilibrium. If you to yes. look at the distribution of the position, if it is at the same uh, temperature as the distribution of the velocities. Yes. You uh, check that, in that. Did you check that to check? Uh, the I, yeah, I, I, I never checked that, but I'm thinking that even for harmonic system, even for distribution for of position, it's the Gaussian. Do you think so? Yeah. For harmonic system, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the local equilibrium will be that is the same uh, variance for the position for the velocity if it is harmonic or whatever temperature. That, that's 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 what I would mean. Local equilibrium. 
Thank you.